Hey there. In this video, I want to talk to you about aggregate queries. Aggregate queries are a new category of query, and they're new because whether you've realized it or not, at, up to this point in the course, your SQL queries that you've done have been answerable by one or more individual records. So they are atomic records based queries. You could say, give me all of the salaries for those employees whose title is assistant engineer. And that would return a set of records that match the conditions that you specify in your select statement query. But up to this point, you were getting individual records. So what we are introducing here is the idea that sometimes your questions cannot be answered by individual records. And you are interested in characterizing sets of record sets of records uh, as a whole. And some typical ways that we might do that characterization is through averages, through maxima, through minima, and so forth, sums. So, you know, you can't answer what's the average salary in our organization by looking at a set of records. Well, I mean, you can in that you can take that set of records and then independently add each of the salaries together and divide by the total number of salaries, but that's rather a pain in the neck to have to do that individually. And as it just so happens, you do not need to. And basic aggregation queries are very simple. Uh, let's talk about salary. So let's se select, oops, bear with me, select um, salary from salary. Don't be confused by the fact that the salary is the name of the table and the name of the attribute we're interested in. We just want to see all the salaries that are currently in the database. And it'll go for quite some time. And there we are. And you can see the last few of them. Uh, but if, we're, if what we're interested in is the maximum, the minimum, the variation among the salaries, uh, the average salary, then that doesn't help particularly. And so let's instead select the average. That's the AVG uh, is, the, is the shortcut for the average aggregation of salary from salary. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, 64,306. And we can also do other simple aggregations. We could look at the maximum salary. All right, somebody's doing pretty well with them for themselves, $136,004 per year. And we could look at the flip side and see minimum. You probably get the picture, but there's the minimum, a fairly reasonable $39,265. Okay, so that's it in terms of the basics of aggregation. However, you might want to aggregate in accordance not across the entire population of a records in a table but according to categories so for example in the salary table there are a variety of salary records for each of the employees an employee's entire salary history is contained in that database and so we might be interested not in the average across everybody that we just calculated, but for each individual employee, what's the average salary that they have drawn over their history with the organization? We can do that as well. That introduces a new notion, and that notion is grouping our aggregations in accordance with a category attribute. So let's take a look at what that might look like. So we select the average salary, same as before, from salary, from the salary table. We want to group those averages according to, or by, we want to group them by employee. And let's, in addition to the average salary, let's also add the employee number so that we can see, at least in terms of employee number, who's who. 
and we fire that off and uh, oh dear um, oh sorry not employee but rather employee number I got a little carried away there we're grouping by employee that's true but the way we distinguish the employees is by employee number so there we have it there and we see based on the fact that that these uh, include fractions of a cent that each individual employee number here has an average salary okay and so how about if we were interested in our old friend Randy Sire and we want to see Randy's average salary for the time she's been at the organization we can do that uh, we can specify that we don't want every employee number we only want certain employee numbers and so once SQL has finished aggregating these or grouping them by the employee number category here and, and dividing them out uh, like this we want only certain employee numbers in fact we only want the employee number that corresponds to our good old friend Randy Sire and so here's an additional constraint for aggregation SQL queries having having emp number in or equal to and we can do a select we can do a nested select statement to say select emp number from employee and all this nested select is giving us is Randy Sire's employee number which you'd think I'd committed to memory by this point but I've not from employee where last name is equal to uh, Sire and first name is equal to Randy and we close that select statement so and we fire it off and Randy it turns out is employee number 11,249 and over her tenure at the organization Randy has made a uh, nearly $62,000 per year and we can look at the individual records that made up that average select salary from salary where emp number now that we know it is equal to one one two four four nine and we will see that these this is this is Randy's uh, salary history and let's look at the from and to dates as well so we can look at salary and from date and to date and here we go from 86 to 87 she earned 43.3 from 87 to 88 43915 and so we can see a history of Randy's salary increases as uh, she progressed through the organization and times must have been pretty tough from 91 to 92 because Randy only got a uh, basically a two hundred dollar two hundred and three four dollar raise which is not particularly good um, but so and uh, the 99 to 2000 wasn't particularly great either um, but in any case you can see that and I'll leave it as an exercise to you but certainly if you added all of these numbers up and divided them by the 16 records you would in fact get $61,989 okay so that is it for the basics of aggregation queries uh, there'll be a follow-on video to talk in further detail about the distinction between where which limits the records that are included in your aggregation and having which limits which aggregations get output it's a very important distinction you will get either the correct information or the incorrect information based on your application of where and having so there will be one additional video on that distinction uh, outside of that let me know if you have any questions with aggregation queries this should be enough information to set you on the path to success for your SQL aggregation homework uh, study hard stay in touch and I will see you online